Yeah, I always tell people that organic agriculture is something that anybody can do. I mean, we have this kind of agriculture from our ancestors thousands of thousands of years ago. And we didn't have any agronomists, we didn't have any ecologists, we didn't have any scientists, we didn't have, it was knowledge from people to people. You have a goal, you said, of 100 gardens, right? 100 yeah. gardens. When, like, what is the timetable on that? Uh, well, uh, our timeline is December. We need to present the project in December together with the 100 gardens and all the workshops and seminars should be done for, by the, for the moment. Also, sorry, as part of the project, we will sponsor five small organizations that people inside of the communities, if they have a project, they will present it to us. And so we can sponsor them at least uh, with the amount of $2,000 per project. It's part of the IIF project. It's something that we will uh, provide. So we are also looking for the projects or, or the same groups that we are working with. We measure everything, our goals. We measure it in the beginning. Like, for example, how much do you know about organic agriculture? Uh, from one to five, I know two. So now in the middle, we need to see, again, uh, how much do you know? Maybe three. And then at the end, so we need to keep the data also in this period of time. Mm -hmm. And But yeah, in December, we, we, we close this project. And yeah, hopefully we will have five new groups that we will work in the long term in the future for different kind of projects that we what will. What do you think the impact will be for the greater community having these 100 gardens? Is is it community or is it, um, I mean, I imagine it's a couple of different things. I imagine it's, like you said, healthy living, healthy eating. Um, do you expect after these gardens are, you know, planted this year, that people will carry on with it? How will you check in? I guess all of those different questions, I guess that was a rapid fire, but. Uh, well, for me, uh, for me, organic agriculture, we create community. We create community and it's a beautiful work to do. And this is one of my main um, goals, let's say, to build this community, to build a group. For me, that will be the, the main, uh, the main goal that we mm -hmm. create a group of organized people that they will work together with us in the future. But as well as you were saying, the true organic agriculture, the, the project goals, well, uh, some of them are like, we will diversify the, the eating that they have inside of the community with different kind of recipes, this, uh, recipes, different kind of vegetables that they will produce at least in a 10%, right? Also that they will increase uh, the income generation in their own houses through this um, garden. In somehow, if they want to sell it, we are building big gardens. So if they want to sell their, their products or they want to eat it, or it's up to them. But one of the intention is also that they will increase their income generation. Um, um, and well, all of the, this uh, creating a, because we have different projects with different gardens in different communities, but we are building a, very, a huge community of organic gardeners that mm -hmm. they will be able to exchange techniques. They will be able to exchange uh, knowledge. They will be able to exchange vegetables if it's necessary. So all of this is part of the what we are saying. And through the organic agriculture, we are working also for the environment, right? We are re recovering the soil. We are providing nutrients to the soil. So we are replying the forest. We are extending the forest in these small gardens, right? So it has a lot of different outcomes, beautiful outcomes that, um, well, is, is part of, I think, what we will get at the end of this, this project. Well, let me ask you a question because just a couple of years ago now, 2021, the, there was the volcano that happened and well, there was a lot of uh, sediment that settled on the land. How did that affect it? Are you still feeling those kinds of effects coming from, you know, just the work that you're doing now? Well, um, at the moment of the eruption, many people, they lost, they, they lost their farms, <laughs> right? They lost their animals. They lost, they lost all the infrastructure because it was a very thick layer of ash on everybody's roof, you know, a lot of houses, they fall down. A lot of the 
um, where they keep the goats, the the chicken, all of these, they it, it fall down. So many of the farmers they were displaced to other farms. So um, now they have been recovering. They are back in their gardens, and then also as part of the organic agriculture, we are using the the ash to make a repellent. Oh wow, that's so amazing! Uh, yeah, so you you have the ash. It's a very rich. Um, it's it's full of sulfur that you can control the sulfur 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 mm -hmm. sulfur. No. <laughs> that's it. So um, it's a, a fungus control, so you can make a repellent. Together, well, we have a recipe. It's, it's beautiful. You feel like a witch every time that you need to make oh the pot, that you need the, <laughs> the fire, and then you need to mix the materials and everything. And you have a very good product that you can use in your farm. Mm -hmm. So now we are making this repellent to prevent uh, insects and also fungus. So from a disaster, we are now taking an advantage with this kind of knowledge that we are exchanging, you know? That's so. Uh, yeah, but it was yeah. a very hard time. It was together with the COVID, right? That during mm -hmm. COVID pandemic, mm -hmm. uh, we we saw how important it was for ourselves to produce our own food. We were very vulnerable. Right. Where uh, I felt very vulnerable to see the market close, and I don't have anything in my house. Why would it, if if they close the markets, I I don't have where to go to buy my food. Mm -hmm. Then you feel like you're really in a bad position. So this kind of uh, knowledge and techniques that we're exchanging. So there was a there was almost like a great awakening then, <laughs> in just your your understanding of how uh, you need to be self sufficient, as far yeah. as just having access to your own food and and it's, I wouldn't say probably that it's easy, but it's definitely something that people can do, especially if they yeah. have a plot of land. I mean, my to tell you the truth, my mom actually she's seventy seventy seven years old constantly all throughout my life has had a garden and you know now now taking these um because she feels like she's too old she's going to take it from the land and put it into pots and things like that so that it can be a little bit more manageable but you know i believe that people who garden just have a, a love of, of of doing that and i think that's something that you're probably instilling in people as well for me, yeah, I always tell people that organic agriculture is something that anybody can do. Mm -hmm. I mean, we have this kind of agriculture from our ancestors thousands of thousands of years ago. That we didn't have any agronomists, we didn't have any ecologists, we didn't have any scientists, we didn't have, it was knowledge from people to people that right. we need to rescue, right? It was <laughs> knowledge that it was not even written. It was mm -hmm. knowledge, it was verbal. So we need to save this, we need to exchange, it's about talking. Organic right. agriculture is for everybody. Organic agriculture, you, you go and ask. I have been asking, like, do you know? I mean, at the beginning, you, you need to ask even how far should I plant my cilantro or my tomatoes? So very basic things, but it's about to try and fail, try and fail. This fertilizer that we made at the school in RBA, we, we did it maybe 20 times before we got a good one that we can measure, and then we can see the growing of the plants different to other plants. It's about this uh, creating community, exchanging, talking, and fail and try and fail and try. You don't need to be a professional. We don't need to bring the academy into this. This can be from people to people, you know, from mm -hmm. the knowledge that we have and the experience and the capacities and the techniques that exist. And um, these people living in the, in, the, in the countryside, they know. And then we need to rescue this kind of uh, information they have. I love that you you say rescue because, you know, when certain generations die out, their knowledge dies out with them. So um, it is a it's a it is a, a, a saving of information. Yeah, of course. And now <laughs> nowadays we have, we have uh, Miss Charles. Miss Charles is one of our gardeners. She's mm -hmm. eighty six years old, <laughs> and she's part of the garden. And she loved the garden because psychologically she's all day sitting in her house. She lives mm -hmm. alone, so she's always sitting in the porch. But this time, when she goes to the garden, we made some rails for her so she can walk and she nice. can grab herself. So it's a very inclusive, inclusive project where people mm -hmm. can enjoy the benefits of agriculture, not just getting the food, but psychologically. She has a beautiful garden. She has some stairs. She can go and she can smell the plants. She can plant, take care of their tomato. It's a very, it's like a therape ther therapeutical, ther ther uh, therapeutic, therapeutic. <laughs> Mm -hmm. 
place where you can go and yeah i mean release yourself from a lot of things so i i hope your mother will make a a beautiful garden you yeah send me the, you send yeah, me uh, pictures after. <laughs> will do yeah. <laughs> will yeah. do are there any projects that are coming up in the future past the um past the 100 gardens that you're going to be working on well, right now we have all other project that, well, the, we have the other project leader. He's uh, Tobias. Tobias is from Norway. He's running with the coral restoration project. Uh, he's working with local uh, community, well, with local people in this coral restoration. It's a very beautiful project. And he's also working with another grant that is about, um, we are planting mangroves on the, um, on the beaches. Mm -hmm. and also planting some of the um, supportive species to avoid solar erosion and then to to avoid any kind of disaster if the uh, sea um, the sea level rise so yeah. this is uh, one of the projects that i don't have too much information right now but it's one of the the projects that the students are working with and it's one of the the ones that we will keep for the for the long term together with the with the ecological gardens very good. So if we wanted to follow um, kind of your journey and find out what you're doing as far as these 100 gardens and, and uh, you know, follow you to, through December, how can we find out a little bit more about what you're doing? Well, you can follow us on social media as Richmond Bell Academy on inter um, Instagram and Facebook. Um, through the website, also we, we will post some of the in the well the results that we get I, hopefully <laughs> and yeah uh, or, or directly with me <laughs> yeah <laughs> okay for sure and also also can you just give us a little bit of information because there are students that that are involved um in richmond vale that you said come from across like many different countries so how would somebody who wants to be involved with that kind of get involved with that well, um, through our website, richmondvaleacademy.org, um, there is the, all the information and the contact. So we have a promotion team, a mobilist, uh, yeah, promotion team, let's say. Uh, you can contact them and they will follow, follow up with you and whatever question you have, they, these, uh, our team, they will be very happy to, to answer all of these questions. They will explain all the different programs that we have at the school and Whatever you fit with one of those, yeah, we can, yeah, they will enroll you. They will make all the process with you. You can be, you can be 18, but you can be any, any age group. Over 18 years old, everybody is welcome. Okay. Very good. Mm -hmm. Because I know that some people kind of discount themselves when they get to a certain age. Maybe they can't do yeah. it, but. <laughs> well, no, there's not any problem. Not any problem. Very good. Javier, thank you so much for sharing the information that you have with us. Um, and again, we'll, we'll check in with you to see how everything's going with your gardens. And uh, thank you for kind of keeping that tradition of gardening alive. Thank yeah, you for thank that. Thank you very much. Thank you very much <laughs> for the space. And yeah, hopefully we'll keep in contact. Very good. All right. Thank you, Javier. <laughs>